Hello there, this is Dimitris Christou and I'm back with another Blender video tutorial and we'll be using Blender to create something nice so we have the default here, the default scene here and the default cube selected and I'll hit X on my keyboard and select delete to delete the default cube I'll hit shift A and add mesh a cylinder, ok I'll set the vertices for my cylinder from 32 to 16 and what I'll also do is change the gap fill type from end gone to nothing. OK. You can see how the cylinder looks now. I'll hit the tab key to switch from object to edit mode. And as I said before, I'm usually editing my objects in edit mode so uh, that I'm not affecting the actual size or rotation of the objects. And I'll hit R, Y and 90 to rotate the vertices and therefore the entire cylinder for 90 degrees on the Y axis and hit enter. I'll now hit 1 on my numeric keypad and then 5 on my numeric keypad again for the front door of you. And I'll hit S and X to scale my cylinder on the X axis and I'll scale it up 3 times. OK. Now I'll hit Ctrl R on my keyboard for loop cut and I'm going to scroll my mouse wheel up lots of times. You can see at the bottom left corner here the number of cuts. I'll set it up to, let's say, 15. OK. Now also, after uh, placing the cuts, hit the right mouse button to place them exactly at the middle. OK. Now I'm hitting Tab to switch from Edit to Object Mode. And I'll move over to the Modifiers panel. Click this little icon here. First modifier I'll add for my cylinder here is the subsurf modifier. Click Add Modifier and Add the Subdivision Surface. I'll bring the render down to 1 and collapse the subsurf modifier. I'm now going to click Add Modifier and Add Displace Modifier. I'm going to change the name of the Displace Modifier from Displace to Displace 1. OK. And for the Displace Modifier I'll need a texture. I click New for a new texture and move over to the texture options, you can click this little icon and I'm going to change the name of the texture from texture, let's set it to displace 1 OK and hit set to Blender original, I'll increase the size from 0 0.25 to 0 0.35 and increase the depth, let's set it up to say 4 OK now back to the modifiers and I'm going to add another subdivision surface modifier and I'm doing this uh, in order to add some more geometry here for my object that the modifiers will use and for this one I'll also bring the render down to 1 OK what I'm going to do now is click add modifier and add a cast modifier and you can see what the cast modifier does it blows up the object at the center of it what I'm going to do for the cast modifier is change the factor here from 0 0.5 to a negative value. I'll set it to 0 minus 0 0.7. And you can see how it now works. It shrinks the middle of the object and leaves unaffected the sides of it. I'll also set the radius. Let's set it up to 2. OK. Looking good so far. And what I'll also do is add another subdivision surface modifier and then again adding some more geometry and smoothing my object and you can see how it looks let's also click smooth for the shading and next thing I'll do is add another displace modifier OK and the displace modifier will be renamed I'll call this one displace2 and again I'll need the texture for my displace modifier, click new and move over to the texture options I want to edit the displace2 texture, I'm going to call this one displace2 so I know which is which, ok and for this one I'll change the basis, let's change it from Blender Original to say Voronoi F4 ok, looking good I'll bring the size down to 0 0.25 and I think we could add about here. I'll move back to the modifiers panel and I'll bring the strength down. Let's set it down to 0 0.3 for the displace modifier for our cylinder. 
Now, finally, I'm going to add a final subset modifier to further smooth my object. Okay. Now, for this one, you might uh, set it to the uh, render subdivisions to one or two. Let's leave it at two as it is. Okay. Now, time to set up our scene. I'm hitting one on my numeric keyboard and five, or perhaps no, uh, for the front all of you. And I'm hitting Dell on my numeric keypad again to center my object. And I'll hit Control, Alt, and Zero to roughly position the camera where the uh, where the uh, where I was looking before. And I'll also right-click this frame to select the camera. I'll zero out the X and Z values, and I'll set the Y. Let's set it to minus six. I think we're good at about here. I'll also select the lamp, click the right mouse button to select the lamp, and I'll hit Alt-Z and Alt-R to clear the scale and rotation for the lamp. I'm hitting 7 on my numeric keypad to switch to the top off of you, and I'll hit Z to grab the lamp. Let's move it at about here. Okay. And 1 on my numeric keypad for the front off of you, and hit Z and Z to grab the lamp and move it up. All right. Now I'm hitting 0 on my numeric keypad for the camera perspective view, and you can see here our displaced cylinder, which also uses a cast modifier. And I think it's time to add an empty, and let's see what we'll do with it. I'll hit Shift A, and add empty plane axis. I'm going to hit Z and Z to grab and move my empty on the Z axis. I'm going to move this up so it is uh, uh, out of the cylinder so I can see it. Now selecting the uh, cylinder here. And what I'm going to do with this empty is let it affect the displace. So I'm moving over to the displace one and under the texture coordinates, I mean, I'll change it from local to object and select the empty as the uh, object that affects the texture coordinates. I'll move down to the displace 2 and again uh, click on the texture coordinates, select object and I'm going to select the empty again. Now I would advise you to use two different empties to uh, affect the first displace and then the second displace but for now I'll just use one. Let's see the amount of frames we get for our project and uh, at the render options. Let's set the end frame to 300. Okay. And the empty here selected, I'm at frame 1. I'll hit the I key and insert a location keyframe for the empty. Now I'll move to the uh, end frame. Click this little uh, icon here to move to the end frame, frame 300. I'll hit Z and X and move the empty for one unit on the x-axis and I'll hit I and insert a new location keyframe for the empty for frame 300. Alright. Now I'm hitting 0 on my numeric keypad to switch to camera perspective view and what we're having here is the empty moving and it affects the uh, coordinates for the displace modifiers and it creates some kind of flow here for our cylinder. All right, let's uh, set up our scene further. I'm going to right mouse button click to select the cylinder and let's move over to the materials. I'll click new to add a new material to my cylinder and I'm going to call this one cylinder mat. And for this one, I'm going to click ramp and we have the black power of the ROM here. I'm going to click it and set the alpha app to 1. And I'll also change the color. Let's set it up to a nice bright. Let's say orange at about here. And I'm going to select the white part of the ROM. And as always, and as for the uh, modifiers and the displacement and materials and all that stuff, you can experiment, use your own colors and your own settings. Now for the white one, I'm going to set it to a nice blue, a nice strong blue color at about here. I'm going to bring the specular intensity down to zero. And let's change the input. Let's try uh, normal. Okay. 
and what I'll also do is set the emit to 1 and what I'll also do is click transparency set the alpha to 0 0.4 and I'll also bring the Fresnel up to 1.8 and let's see okay and set the blend to 1.4 okay and I'm going to you can see the material you can see how it looks right here and for this one what I'll do now is change it from surface to wire and you can see this looks pretty interesting okay now let's render an image to take a look I'm hitting render and the good thing about it is that uh, although we're having uh, some uh, big geometry here, some large geometry here, the scene uh, renders pretty fast. And what I'm going to do for this one is let's move over to the modifiers and let's try to move this thing. Okay, I'll bring the render down to one and let's take a look now. Okay, looking good. I'll hit the escape key to move back to my 3D viewport and I want to change the background color and I've seen that in the uh, last uh, Blender versions you can change the color for the background here but there is a way uh, to do that uh, pretty fast I'll change from Blender Render up here for the render to Blender Game and then click on the horizon color and let's make our horizon here darker at about here okay and I'm switching back to uh, Blender Render. All right. I'm going to split my 3D view. Click this corner here, and let's bring this one down. And I'm going to add some nodes. Let's move over to the node editor, and I'm uh, swapping my top 3D viewport into a node editor window. And I'm also hitting N to get rid of this little panel here. Let's render another image so we can work with the node editor. okay so this is how it looks I think for this one we can bring the the emit value down a bit let's set it to 0 0.5 or perhaps 0 0.6 and let's render again okay looking better so I'm hitting escape and while we're at the node editor I'm going to click this here to and here to use the compositing nodes. We have the render layers and the composite. Let's bring them to the side. This one and this one. As always, hit Shift A and add output viewer. We want a viewer so we can see what we're doing. And I'm going to hit Shift A and add color and RGB curves node. Okay, let's connect this one and I'm going to take the output of the RGB curves node and make it an input of the viewer and also take backdrop so we can see our image here at the back now for this one I'm going to add some big contrast I'm going to bring to make it darker at the bottom side and brighter at the upper side here so you can see how it looks right now I think it looks pretty interesting okay and I'm going to hit Shift A and let's add filter glare node okay let's bring this one right here and I'm going to change the glare from strikes let's set it to fog low and in order to make the uh, filter here the glare affect our scene I'm going to bring the threshold down so that the filter is applied to pixels that are not all that bright and you can see now that the uh, glare node is kicking in and you can see how it looks okay I think we're good at about 0 0.2 finally I'm going to hit shift A and add distort, distort and lens distortion okay and for this one I'm going to set the distort to a negative value I'm going to set it to 0 0.1 and this one slightly punches the middle of the image here and brings it back 
and I'm going to set the dispersion to 0 0.1 OK now in order for everything to work you have to take the final uh, output of the final node and make it an input for the composite so that everything is can is calculated where our when our scene here is rendered okay and this is the compositing I think this one looks pretty good and let's try it and take a look at the animation here and yeah it's pretty slow let's try to bring the view for the subdivisions here for the final subsurf modifier down to zero and let's try to take a look and it's still pretty slow and that's because I'm actually recording this but as you can see here we're having a nice flow we have the empty here moving and affecting the texture coordinates of the displace modifiers so this is it I'm going to stop this one this is how it looks and I'm going to render final image for you to see and as always I'm going to render some animation for you to take a look okay let's render an image to see how it looks so this is it this is a, a nice little background you can create using blender and it's pretty easy and it looks pretty nice as well and this is Dimitris Christou and thanks for watching